In the automotive landscape, if you're looking for the best or nothing, you probably turn to Mercedes-Benz. But there's one car, one particular car, that thinks that it's laggy best. And that is the Pro Duo MyV. This all-new third-generation MyV has been around for two years now, and there are over 100,000 units of these on Malaysian roads. Today, I'm going to show you why the new one is laggy best by going through some of its unique features, test drive insights, and complaints by owners. Log on to webcar.my for the latest reviews, comparisons, and car prices to help you find your perfect car. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button. The MyV is the most well-equipped car on sale given its price and positioning. I can't think of anything else that offers the same value proposition as the MyV. Yes, many of you will brush off the fact that it's just a MyV, a budget option for first-time car buyers. But actually, the MyV has lots of high-value features that even cars double its price don't offer. The MyV is one of two B-segment hatchbacks that comes with LED headlamps, the other one being the high-spec Mazda 2. But that will cost you over 90,000 ringgit. Over here, it's standard across the range no matter which variant you choose. Although, you don't get daytime running lights, but I'm not complaining. Good one on you, Perdua. It's also equipped with stylish chrome door handles, 15-inch door-tone alloys, acoustic windshield, aero blade vipers, and on the inside, you get a full-size spare wheel, anti-snatch hook, built-in tow reader, advanced safety assist, and even two-step adjustment for the rear bench. Seriously, for 52,000 ringgit, you can't call the Myvi a tin song anymore, can you? I mean, I could just end my review here, but my director says in the name of motoring journalism, I have to paint a clearer picture for you guys. So here goes some of the features that I personally like about the Myvi. Most of my favorite parts about the Myvi are in the rear seats, starting from this USB charging port. It's conveniently placed, easy for the rear passengers to access. Once I've plugged my phone in, I can slot my phone onto the seat side pocket. I don't have to use up the already limited cubby spaces down there. The front seat is adjusted to my usual driving position and I'm 175cm tall. And look at the amount of legroom that I have. I can cross my leg like this, no issues at all. Headroom is pretty decent too. But my favorite part is that in the footwell, there's a slight indentation that when I rest my feet, it feels like I'm putting on a set of footrest. Very, very comfortable. There's also two Tetaric hooks for my tapau stuff. Although, having a centre armrest would make all things better, but I'd very much rather have this. <sighs> After scouring online on Facebook groups, forums, and speaking to owners themselves, I've concluded there are three main complaints about the new MyV. One, the climate control doesn't have a shortcut key to turn it off. Two, the rear seats can get very, very noisy because of lack of insulation on the wheel wells. And third, a slow 4-speed automatic transmission. Actually, there's a simple solution to problem number one. Because there's a memory function here, you can press and hold when it's off and save this setting. Once it's saved, the next time you want to turn off your climate control, you can just press the memory function. Simple. But my bigger gripe with this climate control is this obscure temperature setting. I mean, you press up for cooler air and down for warmer air, the remote control in your house aircon, you press up to make it warmer and you press down to make it cooler. Over here, it's the other way around. What's up with that? As for the remaining two complaints, let's verify that ourselves on the road. The MyV is equipped with a 4-speed automatic transmission mated to a 2NR VE 1.5-litre naturally aspirated 4-cylinder petrol engine. It makes 103 horsepower and 136 newton meters of torque. This engine is shared with the new Toyota Vios, but in the Toyota, it makes a little bit more power. Now, a lot of people are complaining that the transmission is slow, unresponsive, and not very refined, and a lot of people are craving for a little bit more gears you know, a 580 or a 6-speed automatic. But after spending a few days in this, I find that the 480 is perfectly fine. In fact, it's great. You see, people are not giving enough credit to this 480. The shift logic is sound, it doesn't downshift unnecessarily, it upshifts when it needs to, and power delivery is direct and linear, which is great for everyday driving. 
On to refinement, this 480 is just fine. At 80 km per hour, it's doing 2000 RPM. And at 110, or our national speed limit, the needle is just pointing over 2500 RPM. As a comparison, the Proton Iris 1.6 CVT does 110 at 3000 RPM. So who's to say that the Pro Duo is not good enough? So right now I'm in the rear seats of the Pro Duo MyV, just to verify and test for myself whether is it the back seat is noisier than the front because you're sitting closer to the wheel well. And what I found using my professional decibel meter reading machine, it's equally noisy back here. The rear bench is as noisy as the front, but most of its noise source comes from underneath the car. So you hear a lot of road noise, a lot of stones kicking up into the wheel wells. What it tells me that the MyV lacks insulation on the lower half of the car. Wind noise, however, is surprisingly well suppressed. So it means that the acoustic windshield is doing its job. Don't blame the tires because the MyV is riding on Goodyear Assurance, which are pretty good stuff. But it's just a lot of noise. You hear a lot of the road coming, being transmitted from underneath the car, which makes the ride a little bit unpleasant. Overall, right now at 100 km per hour, we are registering about 72 decibels, which is pretty noisy for, uh, for a car. But yeah, insulation, Perdua, work on it. So, what other complaints about the MyV do I have? First up is the automatic start-stop. So when you come to a complete stop and you have a foot on the brakes, the ignition cuts off. Natural. But if you so much so as twitch in your brake pressure, the car just comes back alive. I mean, why couldn't it be when I completely lift off the brakes, then the car start off? Doesn't make sense to me. So I have the system off most of the time. Next up, the head unit. It's horribly aftermarket. So for example, if you're trying to pair up Bluetooth from your phone with the head unit, it doesn't show you the pass key on the screen. You have to flip to your owner's manual onto page 13 to find out that the pass key is 0000. Yeah. Next, the smart link. How it works that is you're supposed to download an app onto your phone and then plug in the USB. Then it'll project some information from your phone onto this head unit, and it works like that. Something like Android Auto, but not like Android Auto. But the problem is, it's only compatible with Android phones versions 4.0 or 5.0. My three-year-old Huawei runs on Android 9.0, so this app is completely useless to me. Not very smart now, eh? Another complaint I have about the new MyV is usable cubby spaces. Yes, it may appear that there are a lot of holes around, but you can't actually use them. For example, these are just some of the stuff that I carry day in and out. Keys, phone, a water bottle, my sunshades. And yeah, it doesn't fit here. My phone on the side bin here. This thing is about two inches deep. Yeah, your phone will just fall off right away. This space here, don't bother using because whatever you fit in there, the moment you accelerate, everything will just fly out. Down here, the, it's occupied by the toll reader, so you can't actually fit stuff in there. So your keys will go onto the center cubby space there, and that's about it. Yeah, it's filled up now. Sunshade, the center cup holder. So yeah, I mean, as thoughtful as Purodua are about thinking anti-snatch hook and side seat pockets, I'm surprised they didn't pay attention on to having more practicality to the cubby spaces. So, given the flaws of the MyV, you might think that who would want to buy this car? Well, first you need to understand the buyer profile of this MyV. First up, they are your first time car buyers. A fresh grad probably, who doesn't want to overcommit onto a car loan. The MyV, given its features and price, is a prime choice. Next up, you have your upgraders. Somebody who's driving an old Kanchil or an old Wira, looking for an upgrade, 
This MIV, especially the advanced variant, is a substantial upgrade. Next, you have people who are looking for a no frills runabout as their second or probably third car. Then the MIV Advance, given its features and value proposition, is an excellent choice. Because given its intended purposes, why would you need or pay more than a MIV? Let us know in the comment section down below what you think of the new Pro Duo MIV, or if you think there are any other better alternatives out there on the market today. If there's any car you would like to see us review on webcar.my, spam us in the comment section down below too. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Adrian for webcar.my. See you guys in the next one.